Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we just want to bless your name once again. Thank you for the past editions of the Moment of Truth. Thank you for every soul that you have blessed through the messages. Thank you for the testimonies that you have been receiving from the past editions of this program. Thank you for this great opportunity given to us to be here this day and to speak out your mind and to tell the whole world about your power, how great thou art, and set our times in the mighty name of Jesus. You are the word from the very beginning. Once again, today we pray, Almighty Father, speak out yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless me and bless every era of this world of life, of truth, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And once again, I welcome you into another edition of the Moment of Truth. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I pray today that the Almighty God will bless us together in His Word, in the mighty name of Jesus. The theme of our message today is the God of Wonder, Part One. The God of Wonder, Part One. Our text is taken from out of Apostle, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Out of Apostle, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. I read, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms of them that enter into the temple. Who see Peter and John about to go to the temple? Ask an arms. And Peter fastening his eyes Upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold, I find none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. And walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him the God of all wonder this is a story that is familiar with many of us Bible scholars a 
it was one of the early miracles wrought in the early church. Peter and John were going to the temple and they all prayer to pray. They never planned for any such an encounter with this person who was lame from his mother's womb. But eventually, they had an encounter with this man who had been lame from his mother's womb. And then, by the name of Jesus Christ, that Peter prayed, this man stood up and walk for the fourth time in his life, leaping, jumping, walking, and praising the Lord. And everyone that knew this man as a lame person, as a beggar at the beautiful gate, they were filled with amazement. And the Bible say they were filled with wonder. Wonder. They could not believe what they saw. They knew this man for many years. They knew that he was born a lame person. But this day, through the contact with the anointed, he was delivered and he was healed perfectly. His case became a wonder. In the city, his case became a wonder in the neighborhood. His case became a wonder in his own family. I pray for somebody today. Your own case will also become a wonder by the power of God in as you lift it to this message in the mighty name of Jesus. You better say louder, Amen. What is the meaning of the word wonder? What is the meaning of the word wonder? Wonder is a feeling of amazement and admiration caused by something beautiful, remarkable, and unfamiliar. I come back again. Wonder is a feeling of amazement and admiration caused by something beautiful, remarkable, or unfamiliar. That is, that is the dictionary meaning of the word wonder. I like this dictionary meaning. It says, a feeling of amazement caused by something beautiful, something remarkable, and something unfamiliar. I want to decree to the life of somebody today that what is going to happen in your life today through this message will make people to be amazed. And what are those things Beautiful things, unfamiliar things, glorious things will happen in your life, even as you listen to this message in the mighty name of Jesus. A beautiful event that will happen to you, the people of the world will be full with an amazement. They will open their mouths. They won't be able to close it. Say, can we believe what I'm seeing? Am I dreaming that Sister Agnes is not pregnant? Am I dreaming? What am I seeing? That Brian is now the, man the managing director of a multinational. What am I seeing? Am I dreaming? That Sister Aldo is now 
the MD of this bank. I pray for somebody today. Your case will soon become a wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Say a ladder. Amen. Now, briefly, I want to share with us eight wonders. Eight wonders. But under this part one, we want to look at only four. Don't forget the theme is the God of wonder, part one. Wonder number one. Wonder number one. Is the wonder of a sinner becoming a, a saint. The wonder of a sinner becoming a, a saint. This is the first and the most remarkable wonder. To be a sinner. And then something happens, you are now a saint. A sinless person. It is a wonder to become that. I pray for every sinner that is listening to us now that before the end of this message, by divine operation, your sins will be, forgiven, will be forgiven at your confession and you become a saint in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a wonderful act for an alert to become a lady evangelist. That's a wonder of a sinner becoming a saint. Yes. As you can see in the story of the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 verses 16 to 30. John chapter 4 verses 16 to 30. This woman had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And then, at the west side, at the west side, and before the end of the day, she became a lady evangelist. She went out, telling people everywhere, come and see the Savior. The man who told me, all my dirty past, this is the Messiah. She had an encounter with Jesus Christ, and Ake became a wonder in the neighborhood. They that knew her before, when they saw her preaching about Jesus, they were full with amazement that what are we seeing? We know her and her Lord, but now she was preaching about Jesus Christ. So come and see the Savior. This is the Messiah that we are expecting. That's a wonderful thing. They could not believe, but then it happened. So, wonder number one is the wonder of a sinner becoming a, a saint. If you are here to give your life to Jesus Christ, the first step to take is to come to Him, to fully surrender to Him by confessing your sin. So, your case can, be, can become a wonder in the in the neighborhood so that your, your life can become a wonder in your own family so that that wonderful thing that God wants to do in your life will be made uh, possible don't let this opportunity bypass you let's look at another case the case of a murderer becoming an apostle that's another wonder a murderer becoming an apostle. Saul of Tarsus, who later became Paul the Apostle. Why he was bearing the name Saul of Tarsus? He was a murderer because he was there. When the first martyr was killed, Stephen, when Stephen was killed, Saul was there of Tarsus. He was the one that collected the garment, the clothes of the killers of Stephen. So he was among the murderers who murdered 
Stephen. Now, later in life, he had an encounter that changed his entire life for the better. We can listen to his testimony in Act of Apostle, chapter 22, verses 19 to 21. Act of Apostle, chapter 22, verse 19 to 21. He gave the testimony. A murderer becoming an apostle. I pray for somebody today who has been known as a notorious person who is a sinner. Everybody knows you as a sinner. But by the power that is backing all this message, that power will work for you. We make you to become a child of God today in the mighty name of Jesus. What of a wish becoming the bearer of good tidings and the financier, the supporter of the ministry of Jesus Christ, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was a wish. But one day she had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And she was delivered from seven principal demons. Seven principal demons. That's a great work of deliverance. And then she became a daughter of God. She became one of the financial, the financial pillar of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Of course, you know, she was the first person that saw Jesus after the resurrection. And that is it. A wish becoming the bearer of good tidings. A wish becoming the financial pillar of the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's another wonder. Another wonder. So wonder number one is the wonder of a sinner becoming a, a saint. And I've shared with all three cases here. An alert, a murderer, a wish, becoming children of God. And once again, you are hearing me, but you still commit sins. This message is for you, principally, to repent of your sin. Wherever you are now, even right now, you start to repent of your sin. Humble yourself before him. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Who can tell that problem in your life may be as a result of your sin. But today, the grace of God is here, full and free for you to come to him. Please, humble yourself. Wherever you are hearing me now, humble yourself. Start to confess your sin. And say, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. And give me the grace to go and sin no more. You decide right now, wherever you are hearing me, decide now to fully surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And you will see how he will move in to make you to become an object of wonder. And that problem in your life, you will see it no more in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, wonder number two. And that is the wonder of shame turning to glory. The wonder of shame turning to glory. Shame is an ugly occurrence in the life of man. Why? Glory is beautiful occurrence. Shame is an ugly occurrence in the life of man. Negative occurrence in the life of man. Why glory is a beautiful occurrence. For example, barrenness is an ugly occurrence and a shameful thing. For somebody to get married, a woman to get married, first year, second year, third year, tenth year, and you still remain childless. That is a shameful thing, an ugly situation. And everyone that is not present today, every woman or every man that is considered barren today, I pray that the Almighty God will move in into your situation and shame and change your shame to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Now, this thing called shame is a very painful thing. Anything can bring shame into your life. Any situation that is considered negative can bring shame into your life. For example, let us look at a case. A case of barrenness in the Bible. And because of barrenness of Sarah, our old maid, our maid, Hagar, reproach her. Reproach her. Reproach her. But when in Genesis chapter 21, verse 6, or Genesis 21, 1 to 6, when Isaac came, the shame of Sarah turned to glory. In Genesis 16, 4, Genesis chapter 16, verse 4. Now let us read it. The shame of Sarah. Genesis 16, verse 4. And he went in unto Hagar, that was Abraham, and she conceived, that was Hagar, the maid of Sarah. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress, Sarah, was despised in her eyes. She reproached her mistress because her mistress was a barre. But when we look at Genesis chapter 21, verse 6, Genesis 21, 6, and Sarah said, God had made me to laugh so that all that are here will also laugh with me. What happened? In between Genesis 16, verse 4, and Genesis 21, verse 6, see came. So the shame of Sarah turned to glory. And everyone that knew Sarah before, because Sarah, for Sarah to bear a child at the age of 90 was too late. Because at the age of 40, she entered into menopause. So it was 40 years late for her to bear a child. So nobody expects anything good for her again. But that day, when I see came, her case became a wonder in the neighborhood. I pray for somebody today that your own case also shall become a wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. So, wonder number two, a wonder of shame turning to, to glory. Now, let us look at another example. Potiphar. Potiphar was an officer, a military officer in the palace of Pharaoh. We know Potiphar was the man that sentenced Joseph into prison without a trial. When his wife told lie against him. So Joseph was thrown into the prison. Potiphar exercised his power over him. But at the end of the day, we know the story. That day came after two years in prison that God brought him out and he became the prime minister in that same palace. Genesis chapter 41, 39 to 40. Genesis 41, 39 to 40. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shielded thee all this, thy son so decreed and wise as thou art, thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in truth will I be greater than thou. Can we see? He became the prime minister in that same palace where his former boss, the man who sentenced him to prison, was just an officer, a military officer. So that day, when Joseph entered to the palace and became the prime minister, I know Potiphar will open his mouth and he will not be able to believe what he was seeing. He is a prisoner now becoming a prime minister. That's another wonder. Another wonder. Another wonder. I pray for somebody today. Whichever corner the enemy has pushed into, maybe they free, I mean, they've downgraded you to the, I mean, zero level. 
I pray for you today that the part that brought Joseph from zero level to hero level we also bring you from your level to hero level today in the mighty name of Jesus. And they that knew you before as a failure, when they see you as a successful person, they will be filled with amazement and wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. And your shame will turn to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. The shame that Joseph had in the prison that day when he became a prisoner, that shame turned to glory the day he became the prized minister. Your shame is about to turn to glory by the power of God and your case will soon become a wonder in the neighborhood in the mighty name of Jesus. Wonder number three is the wonder of failure turning to sources. Wonder of failure turning to success. That must be good news to somebody. And that person is you. Because your failure is about to turn to success in the mighty name of Jesus. We have a better example in the life of Peter. In Luke chapter 5, verses 5 to 7. Luke 5, 5 to 7. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at their word, I will let them the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net uh, break. And they beckon unto their partners, which were another sheep, that they should come and help them. And they came and fibbed the sheep so that they began to seek. Another wonder, the wonder of failure turned into success. Peter was a born fisherman. Like I used to say, he did not learn the art of fishing. No, he was born into the fishing. In fact, on a lighter mode, he started fishing while he was in the womb of his mother because the, the the business of the family was fishing. So when his mother conceived him in a womb, she, she carried the conception, the pregnancy of Peter to the seaside to be fishing. So Peter was and learning out of fishing right in the womb. So he was born into the fishing. So he was a very good fisherman, a professional fisherman of great reputation. But with all his professional expertise, a day came, he went out in the night to fish. He knew the best place to cut his net, to, I mean, to Cash fishes, multitude of fishes. But that very night, he applied his experience, the experience failed him. He applied his expertise, the expertise failed him. He tried, he tried, and labor. According to him, when he met with Jesus, he said, Master, we have tried, we have labor and toil. Labor and toil. All through the night, and he caught nothing. In spite of his experience, Many years of experience, and in spite of his um, expertise in that of fishing, he toyed for many hours and he caught nothing. There is somebody listening to me now. You are not lazy, you are a professional of a great repute with many years of experience in your chosen field. But you have been working for many years and you have little or nothing to show for your labor. You work like an elephant, but then you gather and you eat like an ant. A failure in business, a failure in academics, a failure maritally. But the Lord is here today to change your failure to success. And your case will soon become a wonder in the neighborhood, a wonder in your family, a wonder in your city, a wonder in your state, a wonder in Nigeria, and a global wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are the person that God is talking to, wherever you are now, you better say a louder Amen. 
And when Jesus appeared to Peter, he said, launch again. And he said, I the word, I will launch. And he carted his net into the same spot. Not another place. Not another water. The same water, the same spot. Where he had been feeling before, this time, it was a wonderful thing. A miraculous thing. The Bible says, he caught multitude of fishes. And then, his net could not contain it. His boat could not contain it. It was a net breaking breakthrough. He had to beckon to other people, please come and join me to carry this wonderful miracle. Now, it is when your miracle or your blessing is very small that you can manage it alone. But when God promotes you in the recess of it, and you are becoming big. You cannot undo your blessing alone. Maybe when you are still a retailer or one more business, you can still be your own manager, your own accountant, your own clerk, your own cleaner. But when God now starts to promote you from a, being a retailer to and a, from a one more business to multinational, Oh, you have to employ many staff. You have to have many managers to help you to manage the business. You have to employ many accountants to help you to manage the, the finances. You have to employ many drivers to help you to drive the, the business vehicles here and there. Why? Because you are now a wonder in your city. I pray for somebody today that my God will promote you and from where you are now, that fill up position to a better place and you are going to become a success that might need more Jesus. What are we saying? Wonder number three is the wonder of failure turning to success. Many people, maritally, they are considered a failure. Yes. Are you listening to me? Maritally, you are a failure. Maybe as a single person at 40, at 45, you are yet to get married. That's a failure. Or maybe you got to marry, but you don't have peace at home. That's marital failure in another area. So the Lord is telling you today, by the power of the world you are in now, that your failure maritally is about to shame to success in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall be marital breakthrough. For every single see trusting God for marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. And for every family that has considered a, a failed family, I pray today that that failure will shape to success in the mighty name of Jesus. The last failure we want, I mean the last wonder now we want to look at on that part one of the God of wonder is Wonder number four. That is a wonder of frustration turning to celebration. Oh, that is good news for somebody that your frustration is about to turn to celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a story of one man, one man, at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. In John chapter 5, verse 2 to 5, I read. Let me read John 5 5 now. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. You can read the OT from John chapter 5, verses 2 to verse 9. John 5, 2 to 9. The story of somebody, a sick person, a man of infirmity. He had an infirmity. Not for one year, not for 20 years, but for 38 years. He was at that pool for 38 years. He made 38 unsuccessful attempts to be hid. Because once in a year, God will send an angel to the pool to trouble the water. And then the first person that enter into the water will be hid. So every year, Anytime the angel comes down to trouble the water, this man will struggle to be there. But somebody will overtake him. And then he won't be able to get to the pool. 
and the person that overtook him will just be hid. So, 38 attempts in 38 years, and he became frustrated. How can somebody struggle to break through for 38 years? Of course, you know, humanly speaking, frustration will come in. And he resorted to faith. But one day, Jesus just came for him. Out of many sick people, he just came for him. And you know the story? He was made oh, He was made oh. That day, his frustration turned to celebration. He celebrated that day, and people, family members, friends that have deserted him for 30 years now came together to celebrate him. Are you listening to this word today? You are also passing through moment of uh, frustration, that problem in your life. You've prayed, you've fasted, you've done a lot of things, but the problem still remains, and you are frustrated. But I want to announce to you today that frustration is about to turn to celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray today. As you listen to this word, even right now, the power that will turn your shame to glory, your failure to success, your frustration to celebration, you receive now in the mighty name of Jesus. It is now time to pray. But how to go to where we started from? You are a sinner. Wonder number one is the wonder of a sinner becoming a, a saint. Now, bow down your head and talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I want to become an object of wonder. I want my life to change for the better. I am a sinner, but now I want to become a saint. It's a spiritual conversion. And the Lord is here to be fed that on in your life. Just pray. I've got to forgive your sin. I'm promising you will serve him for the rest of your life. And if we do so, and you are going to become a saint, a child of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And when next people see you, they will say, what are we seeing? Uh -huh. You mean this person can become an evangelist? We used to know uh -huh, to be an analog in that brother, but now she is preaching the gospel. That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. We used to know him to be an armed robber, but now it's not preaching the gospel. That will be your story in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, it is time to pray generally. Only one prayer. Oh God, make my case to become another wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Make my case to become another wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. You better pray. Pray to God. Oh God, make my case to become another wonder in the name of Jesus. We have to break it down. Number one, your pray. Oh God, let my shame turn to glory. Let my shame turn to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, let my failure turn to success in the mighty name of Jesus. And oh God, let my frustration turn to celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Almighty Father, we just want to bless your name. We thank you again for another moment of truth and set our times in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, God, for every sinner that has come to you today. I pray, Lord God Almighty, in your mercy, you will forgive them. You will write their names in the book of life. And they will continue to serve you and to work for you in the mighty name of Jesus. They will become another wonder in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, God, for everybody that listen to this word, Lord God Almighty, I pray that you turn our shame to glory, our failure to success, and our frustration to celebration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. And once again, let somebody shout, more powerful, hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.